Yeah, I think Americans have uh, done something that they've learned to do from the Obamacare era, and that's actually to sort of figure out what's in the bill, uh, since our legislators seemingly don't really pay that much attention to what's actually in the bill. Uh, and they've discerned for themselves that this is not something that's going to necessarily be beneficial to them, certainly not long term. I mean, I think folks understand that all these, you know, wonderful tax cuts that are being trumpeted uh, by my party um, go away in 2025. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they've got these little little caveats in there, saying, like, we'll revisit this, we'll see where we are in the economy and all these other, other things. But the expectation is that there's going to be massive growth off of this um, because, yeah, we have been in a sluggish growth period. There's no doubt about that. Wall Street has done very well, Main Street not so much. But there are ways in which conservative, uh, you know, fiscal, uh, fiscally conservative Republicans in the past would have approached this a lot differently. But this is a this is a political grab as much as it is a reform of tax legislation. And I think it's important for people to understand, and they seemingly do, that there are some downsides to this that folks aren't being very honest about right now. Well, yeah. I mean, the last time we did this and had massive tax overhaul was in the Reagan era. Right. So, I mean, you look at that and you're basically kicking the can down the road since these aren't permanent. They, they expire, what, in seven, eight years? So you're dooming yeah. whoever is in power in Congress or who's in the White House to potentially, if there's not this extraordinary growth that's being promised here, raise taxes on everybody. Yes. Like, that's going to go over like a lead balloon. And, and, and that actually, uh, Alex, has been somewhat the cycle, as we've seen. Republicans have cut taxes and Democrat uh, administrations have had to come in and raise it. We saw it, we saw it with Clinton after Reagan. We saw it with Obama after Bush. Uh, and, and so now the question becomes, do we want to continue that cycle? There was a smarter way to do this. Uh, I'm, I, I love the idea of cutting taxes and, and having, uh, you know, average Americans keep more in their pockets every pay period. But there are also uh, costs that come with that. And l saddling $1.5 trillion on the backs mm. of future generations is not the way to do it. And it just shocks me still that the very conservatives that I helped get elected in 2010, the fiscal hawks who came to Washington to mm -hmm. say, we will not spend one dime more than the American people can afford, have just signed off on a $1.5 trillion tax increase on those very same Americans. I know. It, it, so, it, that's remarkable. It's I mean, amazing. Re Republicans and not allowing the deficit to get any larger. I mean, that where's that gone? Well, you know, it, it's it's this idea of political expediency. Look, health care was a flop. Uh, there's been no real uh, negotiating point because uh, they they're going to need Democrats on infrastructure. So that's not gone anywhere. So right now you have a party in desperation for a win. They want to get out of this year as fast as they can with a pat on their back to say, gee, look what we finally did. So they can go into next year making the case to, to people who are already on shaky ground with, with the party uh, in terms of supporting them in 2018 and say, we have given you the best Christmas present we could possibly give you, and that is a massive tax cut, without letting them know that when you unwrap this thing, it may actually contain mm. coal. And that's the problem that the party is going to have to deal with as people go through next year and really drill down on how this affects them. They will realize that with respect to their state and local taxes, their their property taxes yeah, and other things that are impacted, they're going to come on the short end. Yeah. Um, I want to take a look at a, an article in detail here that Michael Bloomberg uh, wrote, of course, businessman, philanthropist. He's describing this tax bill as a trillion dollar blunder that does not address the real problems facing America, to echo your sentiments there. Those being in his mind, education, infrastructure, wages, health insurance, Medicare, Social Security. He's saying the corporations are sitting on piles and piles of cash. They do not need the money. So why is the GOP pushing this? I mean, the economy, it is already firing on all cylinders right now. And Alex, you made the perfect point. The economy is firing on all cylinders. And what are those corporations doing with the cash that they've got sitting in the banks and on the shelf? They're not investing it They're in salaries. They're not investing it in their employees. They're not necessarily hiring, going out and, and growing their staffs. They're reinvesting that in the corporation itself, either CEOs, uh, certainly uh, shareholders, or buybacks of stock. And that's how they're going to invest. There was a poll taken, which our, our network has shown uh, uh, for several weeks now, that shows in the list of priorities, investing in the employee, in other words, increasing their paychecks, hiring, 
that is a, like a 32% issue for them. 60% mm. of those corporate CEOs want to take the money that they're going to get out of this tax bill and put it back into the corporation itself in terms of stocks, dividends, etc. So Michael Bloomberg has got his finger right on the pulse of what could have been done in taking the existing tax structure, cleaning out all the crap that's in it, and we all know there's a lot of crap in there that could have been cleaned out without even having to talk about tax cuts. Mm. Because here's going to, this is what's going to happen, Alex. This 21% this uh, tax rate that they have, mm -hmm. with the current effective rate right now at 39%, is 18, yeah. all right? Yeah, yeah. So the effective rate after this is going to be, what, 10? <laughs> hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.